came to New York three years ago to deliver the Stanley Cup. And there it is. Ever get tired of watching that? That doesn't get old. No, right? That never gets old. You know, I heard you talking on the radio yesterday, and you were talking about 94. But you've done it a million times, but you say you never get tired of talking about it. Never get tired of it. Never get tired of people telling me their own stories and their own memories. And in the city, walking the streets, taxis, subways, trains. It's, it's amazing, actually. And, uh, and everybody has their own unique moments and what it meant to them. And it's just, it was, it's just 25 years is, is still not old. What kind of stuff did you guys talk about at dinner last night, Adam? Just all the old stories. And uh, Which, What are your favorites? Well, I can't tell you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, the funny part is everyone uh, remembers it, each story, but has a little bit to add, and it just builds on it. And I can tell you, we stood there for about 45 minutes to an hour, specifically where we were crying, we were laughing that hard. And that's the special part. Mostly yep. heels talking about Mike Keenan. <laughs> is that right? Technically, <laughs> 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 you are <Yeah>. correct. <laughs> But, but that, that tension that you talked briefly about in the speech, that was real at the time, right? Oh, there's, there's no, no question about it. There was, and I think the, and oftentimes through conflict, the good things can happen. Uh, if everybody has the um, discipline to stay on task and make the decisions that are most important, and ultimately you got to come to some decision at some point, and we're able to do that from the, from the, from the coaching staff to the management to the players. It's, it's not uncommon for that to happen when there's so much pressure in some of those situations, but the thing that trumped all the things that happened was the, you know, our, our desire to win a Stanley Cup, and so we kept that in the forefront all the time. When you look at a summary of that year, there were some hairy, precarious moments and some awful defeats. Was there a time when you lost belief just a little bit? No, no, there's, no, no never, because uh, I think like anything else, sure, there's times when you have to pick yourself up, but as a group, that was as close-knit a team as I ever played on. And, uh, and, and as Mess said, there's a, there's a love, uh, you know, from player to player, it was a family, and uh, we cared about you, each other, but anything that uh, is worth attaining, there's, there's going to be obstacles, there's going to be uh, uh, circumstances where you have to bond together, and, and sometimes losses uh, are, are a way of teaching us, and, and I think we learned from every game that year. We're going to fire up the Empire City Casino spotlight on one of the most famous days in Rangers history. Now, no internet. Back then, the newspapers were still a really big deal. <laughs> what did you think when you woke up and saw that back page? What I just do, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I was so focused in on trying to figure out how the way we'd go in there and, and win a game, and and it was really meant to. I mean, I've told the story for years, but it was really meant to to articulate to our own players that I believed in them as as players, and I believed in us as a team, that we were good enough to go in there and win if we played our best. We didn't have to get lucky to win that game. We just needed to figure out a way to play better than we had been. And I wanted the players to know that I, that I truly believed with all the experience that I've had uh, coming to New York that we were good enough to go and, and win the series. And I wanted them to know that and understand that. You know, that people talk about blackboard material. It didn't give the Devils any more incentive. At that time of year, everybody has got all the motivation they need. Um, you know, I wasn't. I didn't care about consequences at that time. We talked about winning the Stanley Cup from the first day of training camp, and we weren't backing down at that point. There, we were all in. We pushed our chips all in, and uh, we were able to get it done. Looking back at that night, though, you guys were about as flat as you looked in the entire playoffs. Mike calls a timeout. I don't remember seeing anybody talk, and then Kovalev scores a goal, which to me is maybe the most important goal of the entire thing, right? Absolutely, and, and uh, if you recall that first period, Mike Richter was absolutely incredible, and uh, and, and that's the thing I remember, especially with the, with, with Mike, is uh, the, the bigger the game, uh, the, the the better he played. But in particular, that particular first period might have been the best period for me that he played that entire playoff uh, uh, for for us, and and when you have that. Uh, that type of uh, goaltender and someone that you believe in so much, it energized the whole team. And yes, uh, we, we had the ability to come out uh, a little bit flat and rebound because of, of Mike, but he was such a big part of that team. And that's why we, when we talk about it, we depended on everyone in that locker room, everyone, uh, uh, right through the lineup. And, and, and in essence, 
um, in a game like that. Uh, it was Mike that, that really jumped up and then gave Mark the, the opportunity to obviously uh, the legendary uh, you know, follow through. But I had seen, I was spoiled. I saw it uh, uh, before uh, from this guy uh, in big games. So, so, so it didn't surprise me. But uh, Mess, by doing that, did give us uh, you know, you know, that confidence that we needed going into uh, game six. So the Rangers, of course, win the Stanley Cup after a game seven to remember. It was a heart stopper. And after the game was over and the garden was pretty empty, Adam Graves gave us this iconic moment. <laughs> So you did pay attention to the curse. Stick to what you're good at. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever think the curse was real? I, we knew the, the, the pressure to win was real. We knew the frustration was real. We knew there was a thirst to win. We knew there's generations of fans that had come through here and saw great hockey only to meet failure at the end. Great players, great teams. And we were always reminded of that every time we did something well, that well, the team in 1975 did this, but then they ended up losing. So, uh, the curse, I don't know if, it's, if it, the curse is a, is a technical right term, but there was definitely pressure and there's definitely things that we had to overcome and hurdles that we had, had to overcome in a city of this size that maybe in some of the cities aren't, aren't uh, relevant, but they sure were here. I felt it coming here uh, from the first time I put that Ranger jersey on and, um, and you know, but I always say that I think some of those times are, are what propel you to do and overachieve, and and the way you handle it. And and we had a we had a, a team of character guys that could handle that pressure and um, and uh, thrive in it. Actually, what did you do that night when you won the cup? Did you get some sleep or not? Yeah, uh, we were up. Uh, yeah, we stayed at the garden as, as a team uh, for for many hours and, and enjoyed it. And, the, and, and in the uh, the dressing room, thing, the, obviously out in the streets. And uh, if I recall correctly, we were on the upper east side, were we not, Mark? Somewhere, someone told me there were there. Yeah, yeah, we ended up up on the upper east side. Yeah. <laughs> Did the cup go with you? Uh, the cup went everywhere with us. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah, it supposed yeah. to go everywhere? Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. Where, oh, did, yeah. You, where did you take it? Uh, we well. We did, Back then, it was just starting where uh, they didn't really have a chaperone. So right. every kind of day, uh, person or player got a kind of a day with a round. So we had it everywhere. We uh, kids and charities and hospitals and bars and you name it. But took it to the Yankee game. Uh, took I remember it to, that. Took it to the Nick game. Uh, it was well traveled. We 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 didn't shortchange ourselves on the celebration with the cup. <laughs> I, I could just talk to you forever, Mark. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, Adam. Yeah, always great to see you. you. We'll see thank you. you. Thank you.